today. <coughs> On my behalf, I'd like to thank you for your attendance and support. It's unfortunate that fresh of the business is prevented from coming today because it would have been really good to have them here uh, for to be involved in this as well. But unfortunately, he can't make it. I know he's very appreciative of the fact he was able to produce uh, to purchase the leases of the properties in such a beautiful area, and he, I know he feels privileged to be the custodian of the leases. It's regrettable he's unable to tend, spend more time here on the property. But he's constantly in touch and he's very aware and involved in all aspects of activities on the property. And he's, he's actually very astute at working out what's going on. He's got a very good handle of things. He came in with a, a lot of experience, but uh, he certainly picked up on where the, where the important issues are. The covenant guaranteeing the protection of the area is something that we've always had in mind and Mutt is most enthusiastic about our partnership with the QE2 Trust. He's most appreciative uh, of, the of the contribution of the various parties today, because there are a lot of parties um, who helped immensely with this process. Firstly, my initial involvement with the Soho property began when I was approached by Bryce Jack to assist with obtaining um, an OIO consent to purchase. Matatahu and Soho stations, and uh, that was an interesting mission, but we, we eventually worked our way through that, and uh, consent was approved, at which time Matt asked me to supervise the properties. I must admit I was a bit, of, uh, <coughs> a bit reluctant at the time, but agreed to do it for three years. <laughs> it was not long before I realised the calibre of who I was dealing with, and the scale of his vision, and needless to say, that's why I'm still fully committed after 10 years. It, it's certainly an important uh, thing, and, it's, and I personally see it as a real privilege to be involved. Over the past years, we've concentrated on uh, improving the lower country, and this has enabled us to exclude stock from virtually all the riparian areas, wetlands, higher tusk bands, and the high tops. The withdrawal of stock from these areas has resulted in substantial natural regeneration of the native flora, along with our pro, uh, uh, planting program. And the result has been a much improved bird habitat. Uh, the improved habitat, coupled with a robust predator control program, has already resulted in a, a noticeable increase in the bird numbers. It's only a start, but we, we feel that we are making progress. progress. Apart from the obvious measure of having a healthy bird, bird population, we think that the birds are of huge, a huge importance uh, going forward, you know, given so many of our plant species rely on, on birds to distribute seeds. So, Without uh, a healthy bird population, I think that we, we struggle to have a healthy forest. We're also currently engaged with Naitago and Doc in a joint venture to reintroduce buff weka into the area. We're three years down the track on that. And uh, that's, we're pretty happy that's going pretty well. Uh, we're not at the stage where we can release them, but we're, we've got birds. Uh, Breeding successfully on the place, and uh, hopefully in the next year or two, we, we will see a release of Weka back on the mainland. And that we will see um, this expanded to uh, include other species. You know, we're very keen to see other species introduced as well, or reintroduced. Public access is also something, also something Mutt has been keen to encourage, and we're working with walking access to establish a number of walking tracks. There has also been a significant investment committed to the farmed area, not under covenant, and that farm is, is now actually performing quite well. Uh, people should be aware that uh, the farmed area will not be open to the public. Uh, 
that's an excluding the day that we have the Batatabu race um, that's run by the, the Queenstown Trails Trust. So every year there's an annual event that goes through the valley. I'm sure there's quite a few here that are involved and it seems quite very popular. Parts of this area are very familiar to a lot of people. Um, you know, the Arrow River, from up to Maystown, to, uh, up to Maystown. And uh, skippers, a lot of people go to skippers and on up to the branches. Um, it's got a lot of history and it's, it's very popular with the public today. The history goes back to the mining area, era and on beyond prior to human occupation when it was integral, an integral part of uh, the tribal type territory and subject to regular birding and, and uh, healing expeditions. Last week, um, I had a meeting with Edward Ellison and, and some of his members from the Laitahu. And Edward recounted the story of an, of an ancestor of his and Matt's, Rania Era Ellison. Now, Trish said I would never be able to pronounce that. <laughs> I've made an honest attempt. Um, now, he was credited with um, finding gold at Mary Point, and which resulted in, the, in, the, in a major gold rush in the upper Shire. Um, Ed was just explaining he, he also, uh, their party got low on food at one stage, and, and he was. Um, he swam the, the flooded Shiova River and caught some wetter on the other side, so they were wetter there at that time, and uh, kept, the, kept the party alive. And uh, you know, when I was travelling home that night, I couldn't help but think uh, about the degree of change that uh, Rainier uh, era would, would um, have seen in his lifetime. You know, the area was, would go from what was a very tranquil um, location with a lot of bird life, periodic visits by the Naitahu tribe, to the mayhem of the gold rush uh, and being invaded by hordes of miners uh, during that period. Mary Point alone was reputed to have had up to 2,000 miners active at the peak of the rush. He would have seen the country literally ripped apart. And, you know, the first rush, alluvial miners were working in, in basically the, in getting alluvial gold. And then they were followed by uh, huge sluicing operations, uh, dredges working in the river, and then the reef mining with batteries. It would have been uh, chaotic. Uh, the birds would have been gone uh, in, in very short term, time. Of time. The, uh, the, the change would have been quite dramatic. And I, I'm sure he couldn't ever have imagined what the end result would be. Um, I think, viewed from a Maori perspective, the impact of the discovery would be there was nothing short of catastrophic. Gold mining. Era, the gold mining era actually contributed hugely to the wealth and development of New Zealand, and particularly in Otago, Dunedin, benefited, and uh, also with the influx of new settlers that came to the gold rush and stayed, it gave um, uh, New Zealand, as we know it now, a huge boost in, 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 in a direction. But I don't think we should ever. Uh, Forget that the, the, there was some cost, and there was definitely a cost to the environment. Erosion from the shot over um, has certainly been a major uh, cause of erosion in the, in the Tooth River in Catchment. Um, you only have to look at the Roxford Dam and, and the um, Clyde Dam, Lake Dunstan, the, uh, the back of the arm of Lake Dun Dunstan's filling up as we speak. To be aware of the way it's going, we can't 
um, reduce some of these problems. We've a lot of this problem has been compounded with um, rabbit invasion of rabbits, deer, um, goats have been a real problem. So we've we've um, you know we're seeing a landscape that's changed dramatically, and the and the um, the impact is something that we hopefully will see reversed by what we're trying to do with this covenant. This covenant is going to protect the land going forward. The soil and water values will benefit from it. There's no doubt about that, in my view. And hopefully we'll see a, the beginning of a healing process. That's, that's probably, in fairness, it's probably occurring now, but it might accelerate and ensure that the, that healing process does occur. Today we've made small, small steps in the right direction. I think Mother Nature is a lot more resilient than most people give her credit for, and given a chance, um, restoration is possible. I would like to think that if uh, Rennie Era Allison were able to be here today, He might get the nod of approval. Thank you. shun the limelight as he does. 
but he's an exceptionally private person. It would be nice to it would be nice to find some way of for New Zealand to recognise even uh, might even if only to encourage others to follow in his footsteps. It continues to be a privilege to work with Mutt and Russell and share in a small way in the vision for a better tomorrow. Thank you.